In your debate with Matt Slick, when you read John Genesis 1, 26, you said that when God said, let us make man in our image, that convinced you or that leads you to assume God is a male, right? Yeah, God has a body. Yeah, but you said it's male, right? And he's a male body. Yeah, he's not a woman. Okay, can you read 26 for me? Because the passage says that Adam mm -hmm. that he let's made... Let's make man and, man and woman in our image. I get it. Mankind. Man, so, yeah, but the, but the prophets describe the Father, the Almighty Yahweh, having a body. Now, before you body. get to the, the prophets, because the prophets also use feminine language of Yahweh, giving birth like a woman. We can get to that. Deuteronomy 32. What's your question, brother? The question, if you let me finish, not talk over me, like you tried to do with Matt Slick, that says that male and female are in his image. So does God have female parts? Uh, that's literally why I just said the rest of Scripture defines a male body for the Father, the Almighty. Did you literally hear my response that the same Scriptures also describe God as being pregnant and in giving birth as a woman? Deuteronomy 32, 15 that to 18. Okay. Open up Deuteronomy 32, 15, 18. Um, there's lots of, he also is, is anthropomorphized to have uh, wings and to be held under the shadow of his wings. So we get it that there's different language spoken of the Father. What Father. basis do you assume that's anthropomorphic and that this is literal? The context, because in okay, a vision, well, when Daniel sees someone sitting on a throne, that person sitting on the throne doesn't have a pregnant belly or wings. Genesis 1, it literally says male and female are in God's image. And you ran I from just, the I just, to other passages. No, I'm not running. I just explained to it, but you're just going to try to Explain to me, it. is the female in the image of God, yes or no? I already answered your question. No, you didn't. Mankind. Right. Mankind. Genesis 2 goes on to, to specifically detail man versus woman and then follows and up genesis, genesis 5 the goes back to show male and female are both in his image so mankind is, is made in his image but we've got the woman descriptions of the father's body later Does from other that prophets. the woman mankind is male and female so that includes the female so now let's go back yes. to the reading of that text does god have female body parts? You're, this is just wordplay bro i've answered your question this is a this is a does god have female body parts dude he has male body parts. I've already answered your question. But the female is his You just image. got an answer. Why don't you move on to no, a different question? No, you think you're answering, but you didn't. So let's try it again. Now, no, when you say God appears as a man, in Daniel 7, 9 to 10, he appears one way. In Revelation 4, he appears another way. Can you read Daniel 7, 9 to 10 for me, which you butchered? Can we as rational men here all understand when someone answers a question, the other person doesn't like the answer, we can move on? Well, we as rational men understand when someone answers an actual question, man, instead of evading, bro. That logic, you're so biased, brother. You're so biased. No, I'm not because you do that with me. Yeah, you did that with me in the other stream. It's unethical, my bro. Is you're biased. You, oh, but you see, you you don't like my answer. That's what it is. Huh? And then we're gonna look at Revelation four as he's chewing on his food. And right. I want to know what does God's body look like. All right. So it says, as I looked, thrones were placed, and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from above, uh, from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. So here, if you read God's description, he has white, a head full of white hair and a robe. So that's what he looks like there. Can you go to Ezekiel 1, 26 to 28 for me? And above the expanse over their heads, there was the likeness of a, of a throne, an appearance like sapphire and seated above the likeness of the throne of a throne was a likeness with a human appearance and, and upward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were gleaming metal, like the appearance of fire enclosed all around and downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire. And there was brightness around him, like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness all around. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of one speaking. Okay, so here we have the likeness of the glory of the Lord, and it's not identical in appearance to the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7 and Revelation 4. How does he look there? After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here. And I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones and seated 
on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and pearls of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, yeah, on each side. Sound, which of these bodies is the actual body of God that he had before creation? Can you be more specific? Which verse are you referring to? The one he just read, the three that you're ignoring because you're too busy. He read up. seven verses. Re which one are you referring to? You mean Daniel 7 and Ezekiel 1 and Revelation 4? Because he doesn't appear the same in those three. So which of those... You mean the descriptions about his brightness, his glory that's shining off of his body? Which one of them is his body? There, if it's talking about the Father sitting on a throne and the radiance of his beauty and glory shining off of him, it's all to talking about him. Okay, his which body. one is his body? Because they're not. You also know that First Timothy six sixteen says he dwells in unapproachable light. No, that's not about the so Father. This is some of the description. That's, that's not, not about even, the Father. Not even that's close to true. Open yeah. up First Only Timothy. Only a Trinitarian six. would think that, and First actually, a one is Trinitarian would think that. Dude, let's go to Scripture. First Timothy six thirteen and sixteen. That's your burial because it's talking about Jesus. He's the nearest antecedent to the pronoun. Today's your day, Sean. You're going to be sent packing. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Where does it say the Father there? Verse 13, the first six words. No, it doesn't. Verse 14, Jesus Christ is nearest antecedent. Nice try. Where does it say in the Father? I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things Keep and reading. of Christ Jesus who is of his Of Christ testimony. Jesus. Keep reading. So the, the son is in the presence of the father. He's speaking about the presence of God, the father, who is the only no, sovereign. No, it's in the presence of God because and of Christ. So now you're claiming that you're Jesus is sovereign the English in from the Father? Life. It's in the presence of God and of Christ that God the Father and Christ are bearing witness and will hold Timothy accountable to obey this command. Try again. Where does it say the Father? To keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, it goes back to our Lord Jesus Christ. Nice try. No Christian denies that God, who is immaterial, can assume a shape, right. appear in a form, and manifest the throne that he's sitting on right right this right. guy because he's hyper literal he thinks that if god sits on a throne and if he had not ran i would have told him so if god has a body before creation that means god must occupy time and space and place right if god has a body that body has a shape it needs place and space that means this blasphemer doesn't think god created all space all shape because there is space and shape that god occupies eternally and he has no control over it. He didn't create it because it contains him. He doesn't contain it because his body needs a place, right? Exactly.